There and welcome to Dealing with Life. I'm Tom Baker, author of One Dog's Faith, and I'm thrilled to have you join us today. This is something we do every single week at this time. We deal with life. We talk about things that affect uh, all of us, which is usually struggle, usually uh, issues that uh, try to bring us down. And uh, the people that we have on talk about their victory over either struggle or their victory in being able to help others. Today's show brought to you by Malone Dentistry. And uh, in the studio today, I have a great friend who I want you to meet. You know, I talk about a lot on this show. I talk about when you're dealing with struggle, you, uh, one of the greatest ways to bring yourself out of this struggle, at least the, the, the uh, things that could tear you down, is to reach out and help somebody else. You don't have to walk far. You don't have to walk more than a couple of steps to find somebody who is in worse shape than you. And by offering to do something for someone else, it helps you take your focus off of you. Dr. Randy Lang is with us today. How well, are you doing? Doing great, Tom. Thanks for having me. I'm really, I'm thrilled uh, of your story, and I know of your story. Uh, you are owner, we'll start out with this, owner of Lang Animal Hospital. Yes, out in Farragut. Yes. Yep. And uh, you've practiced, how, how long has that been there? Gosh, if I tell you, everybody know that I'm a really old guy. <laughs> but we opened up in December of 77, so it's been, we just had our 40th anniversary. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And, yeah. and you've helped a lot of people, mm -hmm. a lot of animals, and that's, that's thrilling. And uh, something we're really going to dive into is, is what we affectionately call the Josh Project. Yes, it's, uh, it's something I do on the side, but it really has almost taken my time uh, to where I am. I guess my passion now is helping kids using the human-animal bond, yeah. that amazing relationship that obviously you're very familiar with, oh, yeah, with dogs. your book and, yes. and your pets, um, that uh, can change lives. And we have a project that I've been working on for quite a few years. And what I do is I'm going to slow down in practice. I want to pick up some more and do more with the Josh Project because we can help a whole bunch of, yeah. whole bunch of kids. You already are. Yeah, and, we've and, helped a and, bunch, but and I know you feel like you're scratching the surface. Yeah, and we're going to get into the, to all what that means, but uh, let's let's dig back a little bit. Let's. Uh, I know that you were raised on a farm, mm -hmm. nowhere around here. No, we're from Iowa, and uh, I have there's three brothers. I have an identical twin brother Rick, and then my older brother Danny, who's uh, 18 months older. Okay, and we were raised in Iowa, in small town, and also on a farm. And so Rick and I and Denny, we grew up on a farm, and uh, Mom and Dad said that the only thing Rick and I ever wanted to do was take care of animals. And, of course, when you're raised on a farm, and we raised beef cattle, we farrowed pigs, uh, and, of course, we had uh, cats and dogs, yeah. and uh, it was pretty natural because we were always messing around with animals in one way, shape, or form. So. And you always wanted to fix them. If always wrong. wanted to fix them. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. So uh, what brought you here? I know that, that you uh, went into vet school. And Rick and I yeah, went to Iowa State together okay. and graduated, and he went to South Florida, to Hollywood, Florida, practice in a really big fantastic practice there nice and i was blessed i got to go to honolulu hawaii and practice oh i'm so sorry yeah it was tough yeah you know? man. but i had worked there for four months my senior year and uh, got along really great with the owner and he invited me to come back and work so i graduated from iowa state on saturday with my wife we got married on Sunday, and a week later, we were in Waikiki. <laughs> so it wasn't too bad. You couldn't write that. You no, could write that no. in a screenplay if no, you wanted to. That was pretty amazing. That's yeah. awesome. So, uh, what landed you here in Knoxville? Well, what happened is, uh, without going into it, my boss had a heart attack after uh, I left there during my senior year and had a personality change. And he got to where he just wasn't treating his employees very well. Okay. And I just couldn't work for him. Yeah. And so yeah. called up my twin brother and I said, is there a good practice around there? Because we were going to move eventually there so that Rick and I could plan on building a practice somewhere. Together, yeah. Yes. And so um, he found a really good practice about 30 minutes away from him. 
And so Christy and I moved down there, and I, I worked there for two and a half years, and that gave us time to find out where we wanted to move. Sure. And Christy's sister and her brother-in-law and my brother-in-law lived in Knoxville, and we just came up to visit on vacation, and I fell in love with the area, and I told Rick, I said, that's where we need this to practice. Yeah. This is and it. And so we came So here. easy to love, fall oh, in my love goodness. with this area. Yeah. With the lakes and the mountains and the weather, you know, I did not want to go back to those Iowa winters. I'd had plenty of those. Well, there's Iowa winters, and then mm-hmm. there's Florida summers. Oh, and we were and, in Miami, so Yeah, let me so tell this you. is right in between. Yeah, and I, again, it's funny, we left there. <laughs> 40 years ago, I've never been back, and I have no desire to go back. <laughs> Even no. when you vacation, uh, let's not go there. <laughs> no, in fact, I got to the point where I don't like to vacation in warm places. Oh, I like to go awesome. to colder places. That's so. awesome. Yeah, so we ended up coming here cold turkey, uh, opened up in December of 77, and uh, the rest is history. My twin brother, Rick, unfortunately was killed in a car accident oh, no. in November of 99, and so, uh, so you had the practice together, right? We practiced okay. together, and then since then it's been me, and I have three full-time doctors. I'm getting ready in two weeks to hire another full-time doctor, Man. and that's going to hopefully afford me the ability to maybe slow down a little bit and uh, focus a little bit more on the Josh project, and also just taking some time, sure, you know, because I've worked a long time, many, many hours. Yeah, you've built uh, an incredible business. Yeah, and I think God, you and I talked about what happened in the fall. I had a little stroke in the fall and had recovered very quickly, but I think God was tapping me on the shoulder, and he said, Randy, I think it's time for you to slow down, my friend. And uh, it's been very hard for me to do that, and I'm gradually doing it. But, yeah, but I think what he wants me to do is really focus on Josh now. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, let's, let's touch on that. Uh, and, and get it going. The Josh Project mm-hmm. was born out of your daughter having surgery. Yes. Talk about that. Uh, it was nine, She was born in 85. She was nine years old. And so 1994, she had to have her tonsils out. And, you know, a tonsillectomy is not a big, complicated surgery. But it's still surgery. Well, and the other thing, Tom, is if you're a parent of a child yeah. or you are a child, there is no such thing as a minor procedure. No. As long as there's anesthesia involved in surgery. There's risk. And so she was scared, had a lot of questions, just really didn't know what to expect. And so we took her down to Children's Hospital, which, by the way, is phenomenal. Yes. Uh, And her surgery went wonderful and everything went well. But Jessica was really, really scared and just didn't know what to expect. So you go down there and do what you call a pre-admission tour. And that's when they take you and your child around and I think we were talking about it, but the more a child knows about what's going to happen, the less anxiety sure, they I have. Sure, I mean, that, that's natural so for we anyone. Went, yeah, and it was really yeah. good. And then at the end of the tour, they give you a reading list, and they say, it might help your child if you read these books. Well, I think I told you the two best were Mr. Rogers goes to the hospital, which was a snoozer, you know. <laughs> You know. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Yeah, it's a but, beautiful day in the hallway. What? That didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Curious George. And those were the two best. And I read those and I thought, you know, these really don't do anything to help a child prepare for the hospital. Right. right. So being a veterinarian, my clients are very much like children. They can't express their opinion. Uh, they don't know exactly what the big words we use mean. And they go in and are going to have surgery, and the owners bring them in, drop them off. So now they're with strangers. They're scared out of their mind. And I thought, you know, my patients are just like children. And so I thought, why don't I write a book, or why don't we write a book that takes a child through a hospital experience, but have it being seen through the eyes of my dog at the time, Josh, a golden retriever. And so I wrote this Because the kid will listen to a dog. Children listen to animals. Sure. I mean, it's a proven fact. Yeah. And so I thought, In fact, well, someone, most people do. <laughs> yeah, well, they do. Yeah. And I thought, you know, this is something that I thought would be a great idea. Of course, I thought it was a great idea for someone else, <laughs> not for me, because right. I'm not a writer, right? Sure. So sure. anyway. Um, I know that feeling. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. And um, God, you know, said, Randy, let's go ahead and proceed with this. So I went back to the hospital after her procedure, which was wonderful and she recovered quickly um i went back to the hospital i talked to doctors and nurses counselors psychologists and i said would you be interested if we actually had a book that dealt with the reality of what kids are going to go through when they go through a procedure is that something you'd be interested and as seen through the eyes of a golden retriever named josh so that the kids will listen 
and you know it'll it'll impact their lives. Down, it'll calm yeah. them down. Yeah. And they go, please, please, please write it because they knew the book list they had, you know, wasn't the greatest sure. thing in the world. So I thought, okay, that's a great idea for someone who's a writer. <laughs> okay, I've got the plan. I got Let's the plan. Let's find someone to so do it. So I wanted it. to find someone to do it. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, you know the story. Guess who he decided was going to do it? It was me. Yeah. And I'd never written before. It took me two years to write the first book. And I was blessed, though. Um, I had a second-grade teacher that was a client of mine who also had golden retrievers. Okay. And I wanted to make sure the story wasn't too scary or too vivid uh, for kids. So I asked her, I said, now I'm going to write a chapter, and I'm going to send it with you. Would you take it to school, read it to your oh, kids, and have them critique it for sure. me? Sure. So my editorial board was a class of second, second graders. Second graders, that's awesome. Yeah, and it was amazing because I'd get the, the text back, and there'd be crosses and notes about what sure. the kids had said. What and, made sense and what right, didn't. And right, right. And then, an of course, impact. I had a professional editor, yeah. too. Uh, that I was working with. And you probably had to pay the editor more than peanut butter s uh, sandwiches. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. right. That's right. But it ended up, I had a, my editorial board was a bunch of second that grade kids. That is awesome. Yeah. So, fun. and I know that the, the book, Josh, and, and the, the whole process was, was born out of when your, doc, when your daughter was in the hospital. You also saw kids who were alone in their rooms. Yeah. What happened is when Jessica was in surgery, I'm the typical nervous dad, and I can't sit still, so I got up and just walked up and down the hallway. And uh, I noticed when I'd look into the rooms, there'd be rooms that would have family members with them, you know, either a sibling or a parent sure. or a grandparent. Sure, for but comfort about, and for uh, right. Yeah, I mean, they're there yeah. for support and to help them not be so scared. Yeah. And about every third or fourth room, I looked in and there was nobody there. And after about the fourth or fifth room, I thought, I'm going, this is not right. These kids are alone. Yeah. And you in could a see. a scary place. You could look in there. And I'd kind of wave at them, and they'd wave back. But you could see in their eyes they were very anxious and scared. Sure. So I went up to the nurse's desk, and I go, what's the deal? Why are these kids alone? And they said, well, they're drop-offs. And unbeknownst to most people is there are thousands of kids every day dropped off in hospitals for their chemo, for surgery, whatever. And they're alone, and they don't have anybody there that can be there to support them, to encourage right. them. Because uh, and a single most of the parent time, it's working. a single parent yeah. mother right. who has more than one child, and oftentimes more than one job. And mom can't be there because she can't quit her job, or she loses her health care, yeah. and she's got other kids she has to take care of. So mom wants to be there, but she can't. Just can't. The bottom line is the child's alone, and I go. That should never happen. Yeah. And so my thought then was no child will ever be left alone in the hospital. And I came up with the idea for the Josh plush puppy that accompanies the book. And you've seen the plush puppies. Oh, we have and they one at home. are incredible. Oh, yes. Um, it, is, it is my 10-year-old's, one of his favorite. Uh, it's always in the bed. Yeah. Always. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, it's, it's a beautiful animal. Yes, it is. Uh, a beautiful stud. I don't know how you pulled that off. Well, stuffed it's, animals it's, sometimes cannot be so pretty. No, and they're, they're kind of cheapo, to be honest with you. And we have a company we work with, again, Brothers, <laughs> up in Michigan. And I've worked with them for 15 years. And we've tweaked and tweaked and tweaked. And now we have what I consider the perfect puppy. Yeah, and you'll never beautiful. find a better puppy. And whenever I'm anywhere, and if there's a toy store, Trust me, I'm in there, and the first place I go is to the plush department. Just to I check them out. I go back to check on quality nice. and whatever. Nice. So we've got these puppies. And basically, the cool thing about the puppies is they can be in the hospital everywhere except surgery. I mean, they can be on the oh, x-ray table. Oh, so. yeah. They can be on an MRI tube. They can't be in surgery, but what happens is the— depending upon the hospital and how much they get into it, that puppy can be with the child as they're wheeled down to surgery. As soon as the child is anesthetized, they'll take the puppy away. But when the child's in recovery, they'll put the puppy right so beside them. So they don't him. even know what's so going on. So when the child wakes up, guess who's sitting there That's right there with them? Beautiful. And in their mind, you know, Josh never left their side, which is what he says in the book, I'll never leave you. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. kind of like Jesus. He says, "Never, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And, and you know, and, and Josh offers true peace, true companionship, and peace, and yes. that's what Josh does. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, we'll put a bookmark there because there's so much more to talk about. Randy Lang, Doctor Randy Lang, Randy, please, okay, okay. Randy <laughs> of uh, Lang Animal Hospital and uh, Josh and Friends, which is a nonprofit. Now. Yes, we'll, we'll talk yeah. about that as well. Yeah. This is dealing with life. I'm Tom Baker. Uh, today's program brought to you by Malone Dentistry.
You know, for the last 20 years, the one place that I have gone, along with my whole family, uh, have gone for dentistry work, for trusting someone to deal with what is behind my lips. The only place I have gone is Malone Dentistry. Malone Dentistry, right off Kingston Pike on South Peters Road, is a place that I know I can trust what they say, what they do. I know I will get complete personal care. The people at Malone Dentistry treat me like I'm a member of their family. Dr. Stephen Malone and his team of 15, they provide comprehensive oral care that includes developing a plan for your mouth. Their idea and their goal is to preserve your teeth for your lifetime. Honesty, experience, personal care. Dr. Stephen Malone, along with Dr. Aaron Noble and Dr. Michael Costa Jr. will take care of you, even if you're a little nervous like me. Malone Dentistry, KnoxvilleSmiles.com. We'll have more with Randy Lang in just a moment. This is Dealing With Life. Hold on when everything is shaking. Stand strong when the ground is falling for you. Reach out to my hand in the darkness that's holding you. I want to be different. I want to be changed. You are listening to Dealing With Life. I'm Tom Baker, uh, author of One Dog's Faith, which is a book about life and uh, worry through the eyes of my dog, Mango. Mango. Mango is such a sweetheart. Oh, my goodness. She's a rescue from Young Williams. Yes. And uh, she is just, uh, she's had such an impact on my life. I've had many dogs in my life, but this one, I don't know. I think God picks one in our lives. Yeah. That he's going to say, now this is that special one. Yeah, watch. And enjoy and watch and listen and look and, and yeah. share your life with them because they're going to give you so much and they ask for so little. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Randy Lang of uh, Lang Animal Hospital is with me today. And I don't have to tell you uh, how special dogs are. I mean, no. you, you've lived it all your life. I mean, you know, but, but the qualities, the, the Christ-like qualities mm-hmm. that dogs Usually, there are some dogs who just keep it reserved. Right. Uh, and and uh, but but I mean, goodness, forgiveness, patience, uh, selflessness, mm-hmm. uh, submission, um, companionship. I mean, so many things that they do. But 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 obviously, the big one is unconditional love. Well, Tom, if you think about it, you think about all the characteristics that we wish we had. Yeah. All we have to do is look at a dog. And they have those characteristics, and that's natural. It is. Know, they just, where you and I, because of sin and all this other junk that interferes in yeah. our life, we can't demonstrate that. And all they see is true love, and that is the guy or the gal or the family that I'm going to take care of, and I will do anything. I'll sacrifice just anything what I for them, yeah. and that's who I am, And yeah. you know. And they, and, but I think they also. I mean, you you see this. They sense when we're upset. Oh, they gosh, sense yeah. when we're sick, when we're sad, when we're angry, when we're, uh, especially uh, what what I figured out was when I was so worried, mm-hmm. uh, and and basically went through depression. Oh yes, she tried. You mm-hmm. could just tell this dog was like, dude, yeah. come on, yeah. here's my rope. Let's go throw. <laughs> Dude, come yeah. on, let's do something except yeah. <laughs> instead of staring at the floor. I mean, yeah. she would just push me over sometimes saying, just come on, anything. Well, they, you know, they aren't hindered by our brain that no. messes us up. You no. Know? no, their brain just says love, 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 yeah. chase, chase, chase. <laughs> Throw me something, I'll go get it. Yeah. And that's what their brain does. It's, it's pretty neat because it's pretty simple. But by golly, you know, I don't think there's too many dogs that have a lot of stress like we do. No. You know? And I think the magic is the, the word today. Mm-hmm. They live for today. They don't Absolutely. care about what happened yesterday. No. They, they could care no. less what happens tomorrow. It's now. Well, you know, so cool is, you know, and, and I just think it's so cool because when you leave the house for five minutes, you have to run to the store and pick something up real quick. And you come back, and they're at the door, and they're sitting there like, like where did you go? It's you been, so it's like two years since you've been gone, and I'm <laughs> yeah. going, I've been gone five minutes, yeah, you know. But you are the greatest thing ever, and I want to make yeah. sure you know it. Yeah, and I've been trying to tell my wife, you know, you need to act like that, too, yeah. but I don't think that's going to work. No, I mean, but, <laughs> our, 
my wife I know loves me. Sure. But she has kids. She has. I mean, there's yeah. just a lot of things that, oh, yeah. that they tell you. And dogs are like, I just want to love. Oh, that's it. It's yeah. like JJ here. Uh, you know, that's the character in the book. He is actually my dog, and my wife loves him, and he loves her. But let me tell you, when I walk in the door, she's hamburger, I'm steak. And it yep. drives her they, crazy. <laughs> they she, have their favorites. Oh, my gosh, yeah. it drives her insane. And he'll just sit there and stare at me. It doesn't matter where I am. He'll stare at me wherever I go. And if I you. stop in the hallway, he runs into the back of me. <laughs> you know, so. Oh, that's so oh cool. it is. But what, a, what an awesome thing to yeah. to deal with. What a relationship. So, yes, uh, we, we mentioned, but I want to make sure uh, everybody knows that y- you are the Randy Lang of Lang Animal Hospital. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, you've been in business since 1977 and, and yeah. such a tremendous and successful uh, practice that you have there. And you've helped so many people with their animals. And uh, and th- I think that's wonderful. But I know what you want to uh, talk about is mm-hmm. the Josh Project. Yes, I would so, like to. So uh, we, we introduced it a little bit uh, earlier, but, but just recap real quickly what the Josh Project is. Well, the Josh Project, uh, basically, I guess if you said – what are we trying to do? It's all about child wellness. Okay. And that would be physical, psychological, emotional, using the human-animal bond, which is what makes Mango and JJ so special, yeah. the relationship they have with us and that we have with them, to help kids through difficult times in their life. And it could be anything from the medical part of the Josh Project is for children that have to go into the hospital. We have what we call our GI Josh Project that helps children of deployed military. Oh, that's and they so both awesome. have a totally different function, yeah. but they basically do the same it's, thing. It's they the same comfort thing. and they give kids hope, and they do it by using their incredible personality and positive outlook, just like Mango. I mean, when you were depressed and upset, Mango wasn't going to have anything to do with no. that. And, and she and wasn't going to let you do it either she just knew yeah that that's yeah. not right no and we're gonna have to do something we're to gonna make get it through this together and that's wife, what's so cool my yeah. wife prayed she tried everything she was a mm-hmm. rock she tried everything to reach me and, and it just wasn't working i right. was just pushing further away and she prayed <laughs> god i don't know what it is but please use something to break through and or someone I, I, someone and, guess who and, someone was i mean god can use a dog a donkey to talk to somebody in the bible oh, yeah. well, he can use a dog and, and, and you know these dogs talk to us they just don't speak the same language that we do they don't have they a lot talk. to work with no but don't. we know exactly what they're feeling oh gosh you absolutely can yeah so anyway i interrupted uh, uh but and and so we talked about uh, gi josh right but uh josh um talk about the book the first book is called I'll Be Okay, and the reason I named it I'll Be Okay is because when kids go into the hospital, as we talked about with my daughter going through surgery, yeah. um, they have a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of questions, and the more questions they have, the more scary it is, sure. and the more anxiety they have, and so the book was written um, in a very positive, we call it an adventure in getting well, and we do that because Josh ends up he goes in to Dr. Rick's animal hospital and Dr. Rick is my twin brother and he was killed in a car accident I think I told you in 99 yeah but Josh goes into Rick's hospital and is diagnosed first of all he's sick we don't identify what it is because it doesn't matter doesn't matter right but he has to have diagnostic tests then he has to have surgery and of course recovery and throughout the whole book the reason I named it I'll Be Okay is because when he would get stressed out or scared or really worried, he would always remember, I've got this amazing family who loves me, nice. these incredible doctors and nurses who are caring for me, and um, even though he was scared, he goes, I know I'm going to be okay. And we keep it very uplifting, very positive, so that even when kids get scared, um, you know, they know they're going to be okay. And I think I told you the story about the little brother who was about 10 years old his five-year-old brother had to have surgery okay and he'd gotten the josh kit book and puppy and the little 10 year old wrote me a letter and he says dr lang he said my brother as he was being wheeled away down the hallway to surgery he had his little josh puppy and he said all we could hear him say was i'll be okay i'll be okay i'll be okay and the little 10 year old son wrote me this letter And said it was so comforting to the family. See, this is not just a comfort the kids. It comforts the The family. The whole family. Because when your child is not scared, 
as a parent, as a sibling, it makes you less scared. Sure. You know, because I'm when my daughter had surgery, I was scared. I'll be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. I wish I had. I should have taken a Josh puppy and hugged there's it. There's no but, procedure that's risk free. No, never. Sure. No. So. Wow. That was the. You know, that was why I wrote the book, and that's so, why and, we named but it. But when a child, it is uh, very obviously, when they see the dog going through this and, sure. and, and, and seeing the positive and, and it, the dog is okay and, and, mm-hmm. and knows that it will be and it knows that, that it's loved, the child can relate to that. It can, and at the end of the story, Josh said, now I've been through my adventure in getting well. Let me help you. Take me with you. Wow. And the cool thing about the puppy is it can go anywhere except surgery. And the neat thing, too, is it depending upon the hospital, sometimes when the child is checked in, they get their little ID bracelet. Yeah. Some hospitals really get into it. They'll put an ID bracelet on Josh. Oh. So now this little boy or girl has their Josh with the same ID bracelet. So, so for those who don't remember, the Josh is the, the stuffed plush, yeah, the plush, plush puppy. puppy that yeah, comes with, with the book. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. so special. Yeah. That's so special. And, you know, I, I mean, talk a little bit about the reach. How, 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 I know you've done this for how many years now? Uh, almost 20. Okay. And we have puppies now on every continent. Mm-hmm. Um, we wow. have them all over. And up till now, we've benefited approximately 90,000 children, uh, which just blows me away. Yeah. Uh, That's because, amazing. you know, it's uh, no advertising, it's word of mouth, and it's Josh and me, the real Josh, JJ, who's laying on the floor who's right here between right. Tom. He, yeah, and, yeah. Just um, what a beautiful He and dog. I have traveled all over the country. Uh, we started as a result. His tail's of, wagging now. Yeah, well, no you way. mention his name, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> and he also knows as soon as you put the bandana, you know, he's got his bandana. I'm, I'm at work. And he says it's work time. Yeah. You know, that's so, great. Yeah. We've got a lot more to talk about still. Dr. Rang, uh, Randy Lang of Lang Animal Hospital and the Josh Project is what we're talking about today and how it's helping so many kids and really so many families. Yeah. And uh, I can't wait to to uncover more. This is Dealing With Life. I'm Tom Baker. And uh, today's program brought to you by Malone Dentistry. They're right down the street, just around the corner. Malone Dentistry, family and restorative dentistry, has one complete goal. Provide the best that dentistry has to offer. Dr. Stephen Malone, for 20 years has pursued extensive continuing education well above and beyond what is required for licensing just so he can provide you with the best quality care, a healthy, vibrant smile. Dr. Malone and his team of 15 treat you like a member of their family. Talk about personal care. Dr. Aaron Noble and Dr. Michael Costa Jr. join Dr. Stephen Malone in their pursuit of helping you have a gorgeous smile. Right off Kingston Pike on South Peters Road, KnoxvilleSmiles.com. It's Malone Dentistry. This is Dealing With Life. We have more of Randy Lang and Lang Animal Hospital and Josh and Friends in just a moment. There ain't nothing gonna steal my This is Dealing With Life. I'm Tom Baker, author of One Dog's Faith. Uh, Today's program brought to you by Malone Dentistry. And uh, in the studio with me today is Dr. Randy Lang of Lang Animal Hospital. Uh, And what we've been talking about, and I think is so impressive, is the Josh Project, Josh and Friends. And uh, this is basically a, a, a pack that people can obtain mm-hmm. that have both a book and a stuffed animal mm-hmm. that is a golden retriever stuffed animal right. that is completely designed to help kids who are in a struggling situation. Right, and you've seen the puppy and held the puppy. Yeah. Uh, it is designed so that it has weight. All the four feet have beanbag feet, which gives this puppy weight. So when they put it on their shoulder, it's a tactile thing that simulates being hugged. Oh, that's perfect. And, uh, you can't for see a child, it, but... Yeah, he's right. He's talking into the uh, mic right right. now. But it is a beautiful puppy that um, gives him a physical, I guess, a physical friend that they can count on. And as you said, you know, we have we get pictures of girls that are in lady, young ladies now in college that got one 10 years ago. 
and they won't part with it. So when they go to college, they show us a picture of their bed in their oh, dorm, and it's got Josh perfect. laying on it. Yeah, because they won't go anywhere with that. And, and this is not a new thing. You've been doing this no. for nearly 20 years. Yeah, almost 20 years. And, and, and the reason that uh, I wanted to have you on to, to, to help spread the word mm-hmm. is, is the issue of getting it in kids' hands. Right. Um, the hardest challenge that we face is getting this, as you said, to the kids. Yeah. Um, we've got these stacked in a warehouse, and they do no good. Right. We don't want them stacked in a warehouse. No. You know, first of all, they get loud, and you got to take them out every six hours to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, the warehouse bunch. people don't like that. <laughs> it's too many. Yeah. I mean, if you got 2,000 puppies there, boy, that's a job. Uh, but They really are real, huh? <laughs> they are. Yeah. And the big thing is we want to get these to the kids, and we don't care how we get them to them. We have, I think I mentioned, the American Legion is our strongest partner. Uh, and, and we have posts all over the country. Yeah, how many American legions are there? Oh, there's thousands of them. I okay. think there's like 11,000 posts. You okay. know, almost every little town has a legion so post. So they're on board with it. Oh, gosh, they have been on board. In fact, they helped, they worked with us to do the GI. They came to me and said, Randy, will you write a book for our children of deployed military? Because okay. that's a big issue. These kids sure. and their families, when someone's deployed, it changes the dynamics, and it's very destructive to the family. And so they came to us and said, would you help us? And so I wrote a book. And in that book, a little girl named Cassie, her daddy's deployed to the Mideast. And they move in uh, to, with some family. She and her mother move in with some family that happened to live next door to guess who? Josh and his little <laughs> girl dog buddy named Smudge. Oh. And that story, Tom, I actually make it so kids can communicate directly with Josh and Smudge. In other words, they can talk. But Josh and Smudge can't talk to adults, and adults can't understand them. But (laughs) little Cassie can, so they can talk. And so they actually help, you know, her by giving her different... different ways to deal with the fact that mom or dad are gone. Yeah. And um, that has become a really big thing for us, too. And we have troops all over uh, or posts all over that will order maybe a half a dozen. Some will order a dozen. I think I told you we had a legion uh, troop or post up in South Dakota that ordered 350 for the summer. They're getting ready to have a big deployment, and they want every child of these folks who are being deployed to have a Josh kit. That's beautiful. Yeah. And I think what I think is important for people to understand is this is not a money making thing for you. No, it, this isn't you're not pulling in the dough for this. It's no, a nonprofit. No. It's a 501c3, yeah. and which means if you make a contribution and we would love to have contributions directly because that helps us run the company as well. Where where would one do that? Uh, just get on our Josh and Friends website. Okay. Uh, and if people want to get on our Josh and Friends Facebook, it actually shows you some of the things that are going on. I think I told you we have a picture on the Facebook page now of a G.I. Josh plush puppy out on the tarmac somewhere in the Mideast at one of our bases uh, with two big, huge fighting jets right behind it. Nice. And the, the, uh, the commanders of these units that are deployed each get a Josh to take with them. And it's so cool because they'll put them in the backpack and the commander, uh, that we've had pictures of Josh in the backpack and his little head is sticking out. And we had one unit that got uh, attacked by the enemy, and they were in a firefight. And all the members of the uh, group there, the troop, uh, or the, I'm not sure, it was a small unit, but they all received medals for valor and, um, you know, heroism. And believe it or not, they gave the plush Josh one. We got a picture of a little Josh with a medal you know, attached to his chest. Oh, so they gave the terrific. Josh puppy one too. That's so beautiful. They adopt him. Yeah. I, I have a little information that you, that you gave me and, and just some of the applications of the I'm okay book. Uh, oh. It's not just for surgery. No, it can be for anything. The medical kit is for kids that have to go into the doctor or to the hospital. Yeah. That's what it's designed to do. Um, and that's really what it is. But we've also, believe it or not, the plush puppy can do anything for any kind of situation once kids get the puppy and they understand what he does he can help them through anything we've had people come to us and ask us to write books for for instance casa you know court appointed special advocates yeah you know these kids that are taken out of these meth homes are basically they're taken out um showered and they can't have anything from the home because the drug sure has impregnated toys yeah. and everything yeah so they end up with nothing and then they have to appear before a judge and they would like a book for us to help them 
present a Josh puppy to the child so that whenever they go through the court system, Josh has already done they this. Got a so I mean, yeah, they got a friend they can can be with. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. and divorce. I mean, yeah, there's so many different so hard things. On kids. You know, a loss of a loss of a sibling, yeah. loss of a grandparent. You know, I've often thought the reason God doesn't let our dogs and cats live 75, 85 years is because I think for kids losing a beloved pet, it helps prepare them to lose a, Absolutely. You know, either a grandparent. Because it hurts or, really just as much. Oh, it hurts big time, especially yeah. if you're a little kid. Yeah. And uh, I think he allows money. them to go through two or three animals before they start losing those yeah. they love that are human. Yeah. I, I heard a story one time. Uh, a, a child, uh, the family lost their dog, mm-hmm. and the mom and dad were going to go up to the child's room and, and try mm-hmm. to comfort him. And yeah. they went up and, and wasn't crying. And they said, what's, what's the thing? And yeah. they said, well, I've learned that dogs learn to love faster than we do. <laughs> So God goes ahead and takes them. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, how smart they is that? They don't have to be here as long to do their <laughs> job, right? Exactly. You know, people like me, I'll probably have to be here 120 years to yeah. get what he wants because I'm mean, slow. I, he'll take us when we get it. Man, <laughs> it's going to be a while. It'll be a while for me, <laughs> I'm right. telling you. Yeah, Mango and Josh, they already got <laughs> it. They've got it. They've done their work. Just, He's just blessing us with them right yeah, now. Yeah, magical. Yeah. And I mean, I know you've seen so many times how Josh comforts anybody. And it, they, they, they sense when something's up, and it's, I, I think they migrate to kids. They do. Um, I have a story. We were down in Orlando at the Children's Miracle Network. We've been affiliated. We're affiliated with them for many, many years. And uh, we were down there at their national convention, and we were walking with Josh down the hallway. All of a sudden, this kid comes running. Josh, Josh, he was yelling for him. He knew exactly who he was. He knew, and he slid on his knees right up to oh. him. was just loving on him. Yeah. And I noticed this lady standing off to the side, and she was crying. And so I went over there. I go, may I help you, ma'am? What's, what's the problem? And she said, well, that's my son. And I noticed this kid had scars all over his head. Okay. And he'd been attacked and al- actually had died and been revived. He had been attacked by a pit bull. And so this little boy was scared to death sure. of dogs, yeah. right? And he'd been around Josh for a couple days and finally said, I'm going to trust that dog, and came up. And Josh, of course, was just loving on him. And the mom was just in tears. She says, it makes me feel so good because I was afraid he would never trust a dog again. be around the dog. And that shows you that power, you know. Uh, the unconditional, unconditional love, love and the it, trust. Yeah, and the kids, they pick that up real quick, quicker yeah. than we do. Well, yeah. and, and, and they're so patient. I mean, Mango has been around my 10-year-old for 10 years, yes. basically. Yeah. And, and and Christian, my child, my son, has just taken face dives on him. I mean, yeah. from across oh, the yeah. room. Oh, yeah. And Mango just looks up like, this is yeah. okay, right? Yeah. This yeah. is good. Yeah. And then and just it's it's fine from there. Yeah. And they'll, they'll take it, and they just know that that's part of the thing to, yes. to, to show love. Yeah. It, and you know what? they He has had eight and ten kids hanging on him at one time. Yanking and you just on see here, oh, yanking, yeah. pulling. And you know, all the adults are going, is that okay? I go, look at him. And he's got his little tail going in back and heaven. forth. And he's in hog heaven. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so special. Yeah. It's the Josh Project. Uh, Josh and Friends uh, is is the actual name of the mm-hmm. nonprofit. Right. And uh, it's so magical what what you have done so far. And it looks like in, in your eyes and, the, and to hear you talk, you're just scratching the surface. Yeah, we're just scratching the surface. Um, we just got our 501c3, the nonprofit, this fall. Okay. And so we're kind of... You know, I said we're crawling on our knees because it's a whole different. Before it was a private charity. Every penny went right back to the project. Um, And my partner and I in the project, we decided that if we wanted to help a lot more kids, we were going to have to do a 501c3. And on the fourth fourth attempt, and they're not easy to get. No, they're not. On the fourth attempt, in fact, I told you I had decided that if if we didn't get it, um, I wasn't going to continue the project. And, oh, my. And God, you know, he goes, come on, dummy. <laughs> you know, we're going to do this. And he it's, made it go it's through. It's going to happen. Yeah, and he got well, it. Well, you're doing it in his name. You're oh, doing gotcha. it in his glory. Yeah. And, and you're helping others yeah. through difficult situations. And, and, and uh, what I said at the beginning of the program is we, we all can do that. Oh, yeah. And um, if, if you don't find an outlet to be able to help mm-hmm. somebody immediately, yeah. here is something that you can do. 
yeah. that will help people. Well, I mean, if you want to help out the Josh Project. Right, and we would appreciate any contributions. Yeah. Uh, and if you can contribute and, and we can send you a kit, uh, get it to a kid, that's the name of the program. I mean, that's what we want. Our, like I said, 2,000 puppies sitting in a warehouse, all they do is bark and cause a lot of <laughs> disruption. We want those little guys they out. They want a home. They want a home. That's yeah. absolutely It's like right. the biggest shelter in the area. <laughs> <laughs> Young Williams is small compared to my <laughs> my kill. Your warehouse, that's right. <laughs> but they stay in boxes. Yeah, they do. It's that. amazing too how well they do. This is dealing with life. I'm Tom Baker, uh, and uh, in in the studio with me is his Randy Lang of Lang Animal Hospital, and uh, and the program of Josh, the Josh Project. Uh, we'll have just a couple more words here in just a minute. Mm-hmm. This program today brought to you by. Malone Dentistry. We'll deal with more in just a second. Just know you're not alone. Because I'm going to make this place your home. I've seen miracles just happen. Silent prayers get answered. Broken hearts become brand new. That's what faith can do. This is Dealing With Life. I'm Tom Baker, author of One Dog's Faith, and, and, and what a great program we've had today. Randy Lang of Lang Animal Hospital has been with us talking about the Josh Project, and you've helped over 90,000 kids, yeah. you believe, yeah, so I far. I want to eventually fill Neyland Stadium with these kids. There you go. Wouldn't that there be cool? And, and what the Josh Project is, if, if, if you just joined, uh, it's basically a book that's called I'll Be Okay, yes. a design to help kids going through struggles, uh, right. usually a medical procedure, but it's not all. Or a parent that's deployed. Yeah, and oh, that's right, because that's the, the GI Josh. The GI I'll Josh. Be okay. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, what uh, you have a letter you read to me a minute ago, and I want you mm-hmm. to read that uh, to to the listeners to to kind of exemplify w- what the impact has been with the Josh Project so far. Yeah, this uh, we were in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, at the American Legion's annual convention, and that's a big meeting, and there are thousands of people there. Okay, and we were at our booth. We would take and set a booth up there, and there you know, uh, the area that they had all their uh, supporters and the representatives and different companies that worked with the Legion. And we had this guy, I told you, he kind of looked like Paul Bunyan. He was this big guy with a big flannel, you know, plaid shirt on, uh, three-day beard. And he comes up, and I'm going, gosh, I hope he's nice. Uh, (laughs) But he was great, and he he says, guys, could I share something with you? And we go, absolutely. He said, our post, and I think they were from Wisconsin, um, had given a young girl who was terminal, uh, had a terminal illness, a Josh kit, and they felt like even though she was terminal, she should have hope. Absolutely. Uh, exactly. And companionship. So, uh, companionship. Friend, yeah, and comfort. Right. Now, this little girl was so sick that she could not have a live puppy. Okay. Okay? Um, because I'm sure she was on some drugs that maybe made her immunosuppressed, but bottom line is she can never have her own puppy. And this little girl passed away. And um, the family wrote the post a short note thanking them for the Josh kit. And if you don't mind, I'd just like to read it. It's very short. Please do. And it says, To the sons of the American Legion, Josh was a great comfort to our daughter. She She always wished for a puppy and loved Josh a lot. During her moments of greatest pain, she kept him at her side. Because of this, we left him with her as she sleeps. And it's signed by mom and dad and a brother and a sister. Mm. And what happened there is that um, she loved her Josh so much, mom and dad uh, let her be buried with Josh. With with the stuffed animal. And I think I told you I had another little boy. I got an email from a mother. He was probably 10 years old, and he had a terminal disease. And they were very honest with him and had shared with him that he was going to pass away. And uh, they said, you get three things that you can take with you. And the first thing he asked for, can I take Josh with me? And oh, they buried him with this little Josh. So, and so every time I read this or every time I think about this, it gives me goosebumps. Yeah. Because this little puppy becomes alive and it becomes their companion, their best friend. They can talk to him. They can hug him. They can love him. And he gives everything back, just like our living, breathing, the ones that we have that are home that we love so much. 
you know, to a child, this little plush puppy takes on a life of its own. And Absolutely. And it can talk to them, too. And it's real comfort. It's very comfortable. Yeah. yeah. And um, if somebody listening wanted to get a Josh pack mm-hmm. th- that includes the book and a stuffed animal. And a carrier, a really cool little carrier, yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, great-looking box, a yeah. carrier box yeah. thing. How, how, do they, how do they get Just one? Just go online to joshandfriends.com, and you can order one. Again, it's a, we are a 501c3, uh, you know, a tax, ex- tax exempt yeah. uh, nonprofit. So, yeah, nobody's making thousands, millions of dollars. No, and the bottom line so. is you can write it off. If you get a book and puppy um, or if you just make a donation. And like I said, there's so many wonderful charities out there, um, but we've got a really neat thing for people that are animal lovers. This is a special. Nobody else does it. And we can help a lot of kids. We've been fortunate to help a bunch of kids. Yeah. But we want to help a lot more. And every day there's thousands of kids that could use a Josh going into the hospital or whose mom or dad are being deployed, and they could use one. So if you know anybody that's got a child, um, get a Josh kit, make a donation. We'll ship one to you, and uh, it'll help us uh, help other kids. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for your heart for doing this. Thank you for saying yes to God when he put this on your heart. Yeah, well, guess what? It took me a long time to say yes, and I think I told you God is so patient with me. Um, if I was God, I would have said, okay, Randy, enough. We'll get yeah, someone else. Yeah. But he was because very Because you patient. didn't feel qualified. I wasn't you qualified. You had the, a mind. great idea. Yeah, but you didn't yeah, feel qualified. No, but God just hung with me and encouraged me and loved me and uh, just put up with me, to be honest <laughs> with you. But and, you said yes. And finally I said, okay, I'm going to quit arguing. Let's get this done. Yeah. And then, Tom, he opened doors like you can't imagine. I, I see I that. Just, it, it, every time we had a little setback, We'd get a little, you know, upset, and by golly, when we're getting upset, it's like you when you were worrying and in, you know, depression. Yeah. yeah. He would open the door up, and what he was saying is, "Trust me, See, trust it's me. me, it's me, it's not you." Well, and, and and a lot of times I believe that's him just allowing us to explore <laughs> options and yeah. realizing he's really the only one that can do anything. He, he's, he's the really, only one, and you know what? He gives us gifts that we don't even know about. Yeah. And I tell everybody, when I go speak, I tell everybody, do what makes your heart dance. If you can do what makes your heart dance, you're going to be doing some special stuff yeah. and helping people. Keep God but in the we go through life, and very few people ever do what really makes their heart dance. Yeah, yeah we you know just go, go through the motions yeah. and because go through the... Yeah. We just, we're so busy living, we forget to look at life and yeah. do stuff that makes... M- us inside different and positive and do what makes your heart dance that's the greatest thing in the world and i tell you for these last few years my heart has been dancing that's and beautiful. i'm so thankful that is so yeah. beautiful god yeah. bless you uh i that's pray I pr- well i pray for the continued motivation success strength and energy to keep this going well i thank you for having me on today and give us an opportunity to share the word because uh you are part of what God has done in my life. He brought you into my life. He's allowed me to spend some time with you, not only as a friend, but also to work together to see if we can't do something to help kids with these yeah. wonderful animals that we love. That's yeah. awesome. Pretty special. That's awesome. Yeah. This is Dealing With Life. I'm Tom Baker. We do this every single week. If you want someone to hear this program, all you have to do is go to dealingwithlife.net All of the shows are on there for archive purposes to listen as you will. This is Dealing With Life. We'll deal with more next week.